Can you hear me now? Testing. Cool.
The ceremony is about to begin. Please take seats. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. For those attending in person, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Remove your proxy badges and be sure to adhere to social distancing and mask wear requirements. For those joining us virtually, please be sure to mute your microphone at this time. The ceremony will begin momentarily. Good morning. Today we gather to celebrate a momentous occasion for 22 members of Cadet Squadron 17 in the class of 2021 as they graduate from the United States Air Force Academy. This ceremony holds deep importance and meaning to the graduating cadets and their families as it represents the official beginning. Of their journey as officers in the United States military, please stand for the national anthem. Thank <laughs> you. 
Shanbar for singing. Please be seated. It is an honor to stand before you on this very special occasion, the graduation ceremony for Squadron 17, the United States Air Force Academy class of 2021. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this graduation and commissioning ceremony for Cadet Squadron 17 and for the Brigadier General, General James Robinson Reisner class of the Air Force Academy. At this time, I would like to introduce our distinguished guests. Please hold your applause until all of the introductions have been made. Our guest speaker, Captain Retired John Plunkett. The host for today's ceremony, Cadet Squadron 17, Air Officer Commanding, Lieutenant Colonel Brent Miles. Cadet Squadron 17, Academy Military Trainers, Master Sergeant Angela G Robinson, Master Sergeant Amanda Brown, and Technical Sergeant Joshua Woodbury. Thank you to all of our distinguished guests. We would also like to take a moment to recognize the families, friends, and classmates of all of our commissioning cadets who are joining us in person and virtually. We offer our most sincere thanks for the love and support you have provided our graduates and will continue to provide them in their careers as officers. Please join me in a round of applause in their honor. I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Captain John Plunkett, United States Coast Guard. Sir, if you could take the stage. Well, good afternoon to everyone. I can't tell you what an honor it is to stand before you today on this very special occasion. Here we go. So, so my name is JJ Plunkett and I work for the Houston Pilots. The pilots I work for practice a profession that long predates Kitty Hawk. The pilots I work for are ship pilots. They guide ships into our ports around dangerous shoal waters and around other ships. The original ship pilots were local fishermen who offered their services to visiting vessels for a price. Ship pilots are even mentioned in the Bible. Some say that ship pilots might even be the world's third oldest profession. But of course, I'm not here to offer you a lecture on maritime or biblical history. First and foremost, I'm here to congratulate you, the firsties of Squadron 17, on reaching this amazing milestone. More so even, this amazing threshold that you're about to cross over. into that though. I'd like to congratulate the family, friends, mentors, and coaches that have supported these newest additions to the Air Force Officer Award. Many were called, but few were chosen. Your understanding, support, and encouragement ensured the best and the brightest that the United States has, has to offer these young men and women 
are both called and chosen. In fact, many of you shaped these young men and women long before their appointment as cadets four years ago. You gave them the tools they needed to make their minds and bodies strong, but also helped to form their character. You instilled in them the virtues that led them to pledge themselves to a life of service. And after they cross the threshold today, after they take the oath that binds them forever, I hope you will continue to support them. Many more challenges face them. In fact, many, many greater than these they've overcome here at the Academy. Flight school for some, deployment overseas into harm's way, balancing family and service, command assignments. They'll need you more than ever, even if you just talk through a problem and know you're there to listen. And aren't we also proud of them? I'm just an uncle to a cadet, but I brag on them all the time. I've heard it said that the current generation is the most progressive, most educated, and the most connected in history. But it's not those qualities that bring me comfort when I see the challenges our nation faces. What brings me comfort as our generation begins to release the reins of leadership to the next is what I see in the faces of these young men and women seated in front of me. I see integrity. I see service before self. I see excellence. You as parents, friends, coaches, and mentors should feel proud that you're a big part of that. To the firsties of Squadron 17, congratulations again for accomplishing so much in the last four years. I mentioned earlier that you stand on the threshold of a great event. You're commissioning as second lieutenants in the service of the greatest Air Force or the greatest country in the world. I graduated from the Coast Guard Academy in 1987. As was the tradition then, we award of our bachelor degree and commission took place at the same ceremony. The event signaled one thing to me, leaving the academy finally and going out into the real world and accomplishing real missions. I never took the time that I remember to dwell on what each piece of paper meant to me, my commission and my degree. I was glad to hear that at the Air Force Academy, you give each its due time and occasion, graduation and this ceremony, giving the new officers and their supporters a chance to think about each. Many people this year will be awarded a diploma. I've read that nearly 2 million students will be awarded bachelor's degree this year, and they will join 95 million other Americans who have already obtained a bachelor's degree in the United States. But only a select, a select few, like you, will choose by their own will to take an oath freely and without mental reservation or purpose of evasion to defend the U.S. Constitution to the point of sacrificing their own lives. I submit to you that the degree that you will receive tomorrow with much pomp and circumstance will never put you into harm's way. And in fact, considering the person that you are, you will go freely into harm's way in fulfillment of your oath and commission to protect the lives of your fellow service members and the freedom of people you don't even know. And while the degree you receive tomorrow cannot be taken away from you as you've earned it through your academic effort, if you fail to live those core values you've learned and lived by here at the academy or stray from the path of ethical behavior, you could find yourself without a commission. And so while your degree marks the end of your academic career here at the academy, an end unto itself, the oath that you're about to take serves both as a reflection of your character and the commitment of future service. A reflection of your character because not just everyone is cut out, or more importantly, drawn to a, serve, to a life of service. The oath you're about to take, which can trace its lineage back to the oath sworn by officers joining the Continental Army in 1775, is similar to that oath taken by other service-oriented professions, such as the Hippocratic Oath by medical professionals, the vows taken by religious orders, and the oath taken by law enforcement. It binds the oath taker to future service, but also speaks volumes about the character of the person taking the oath. What brings a person, whether an aspiring military officer, a law enforcement officer, or a doctor to take such an oath? You all have your reasons for having been drawn to accept a commission in the Air Force. For some, it's patriotism, desire to give back your faith, to stand on the side of justice. But whatever the reason, the virtues that brought you to this point will sustain you in the future, especially with the support of those that have helped you so far. So let me end my remarks with congratulations again to the firsties, soon to be second lieutenants. May God bless you in all you do in the service of our country. May God bless the United States Air Force. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
Thank you, Captain Plunkett. Our Cadet Squadron Commander, Katie Coons, will now present him with the guest speaker gift. We will now begin the ceremonial commissioning of the United States Air Force Academy Cadet Squadron 17, Class of 2021. Although normal protocol requires everyone to be standing during the oath of office, due to the number of commissioning lieutenants present, only the official party will remain at the position of attention. All other individuals, please remain seated. We will begin calling names in alphabetical order. Our first graduate is Cadet First Class, Jordan Brown. <laughs> Cadet Brown has asked Lieutenant Colonel Retired Paul Brown to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Jordan Brown. <laughs> Lieutenant Brown will head to Shepherd Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Sophia Bynum. <laughs> Cadet Bynum has asked Colonel Retired Robert A. Tor II to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Sophia Bynum. <laughs> Lieutenant Bynum will head to Goodfellow Air Force Base to begin her first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Nicholas Curtis. 
Cadet Curtis has asked Lieutenant Colonel Brent Miles to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Nicholas Curtis. <laughs> Lieutenant Curtis will head to Rice University to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Zachary Dickin. Cadet Dickin has asked Lieutenant Colonel Brent Miles to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Zachary Dickin. <laughs> Lieutenant Dickin will head to Hurlburt Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Braden Esplin. Cadet Esplin has asked Lieutenant Colonel Brent Miles to administer the oath of office.
Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Braden Esplin. <laughs> Lieutenant Esplin will head to Hill Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Mitchell Fowler. <laughs> Cadet Fowler has asked Commander Retired Craig Fowler to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Mitchell Fowler. <laughs> Lieutenant Fowler will head to McGuire Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Damani Hansford. Cadet Hansford has asked First Lieutenant Nikozi Stewart to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Damani Hansford. <laughs> Lieutenant Hansford will head to Dover Air Force Base to begin his first assignment.
our next graduate, next first class, Shirley Howe. Cadet Howe has asked Captain Tyler Albright to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Shirley Howe. Lieutenant Howe will head to Vanford Air Force Base to begin her first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Reagan Harrison. <laughs> Cadet Harrison has asked Lieutenant Colonel Brent Miles to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Reagan Harrison. <laughs> Lieutenant Harrison will head to Goodfellow Air Force Base to begin her first assignment. Our next first class, Mario Castle. Lieutenant <laughs> Castle is asked Lieutenant Colonel Brent Miles to administer the oath of office.
Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Mario Castle. Lieutenant Castle will head to Goodfellow Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Catherine Coons. <laughs> Cadet Coons has asked Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Coons to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Catherine Coons. <laughs> Lieutenant Coons will head to Joint Base Anacostia Bowling to begin her first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Peter Lockmeyer. Cadet Lockmeyer has asked Captain Emma Lockmeyer to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Peter Lockmeyer. <laughs> Lieutenant Lockmeyer will head to the University of South Alabama to begin his first assignment.
Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Matthew Mark. Cadet Mark has asked Colonel Retired Christopher Patterson to administer the oath of office. is Cadet First Class, Ryan McKnight. <laughs> Cadet McKnight has asked Lieutenant Colonel Mike Foster to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Ryan McKnight. <laughs> Lieutenant McKnight will head to Wright Patterson Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Harley Morgan. Cadet Morgan has asked Colonel Retired Chester Morgan to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Harley Morgan. <laughs> Lieutenant Morgan will head to Georgetown University to begin his first assignment.
Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Fenton Nakata. <laughs> Cadet Nakata has asked Major Nathaniel Dahl to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, second lieutenant, Benton Nakata. <laughs> lieutenant Nakata will head to Herbert Field to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Alexis Springfield. <laughs> Cadet Springfield has asked First Lieutenant Nicosi Stewart to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, second lieutenant, Alexis Springfield. <laughs> lieutenant Springfield will head to Vandenberg Air Force Base to begin her first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Joshua Stoner. <laughs> Cadet Stoner has asked Second Lieutenant Seth Hill to administer the oath of office.
Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Joshua Stoner. Lieutenant Stoner will head to Hanscom Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Cadet Swearingen has asked Second Lieutenant Danny Zivney to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll head to Shepherd Air Force Base to begin the first time. Next graduate is Cadet First Class William Ulrich. Cadet Ulrich has asked Lieutenant Colonel Justin Rupa to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant William Ulrich. <laughs> Lieutenant Ulrich, Keesler Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our next graduate is Cadet First Class, Alexander Wise. <laughs> Cadet Wise has asked Major Cruz to administer the oath of office.
Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Alexander Wise. Lieutenant Wise will head to Lackland Air Force Base to begin his first assignment. Our last graduate is Cadet First Class Vincent Lombardi. Woo! Cadet Lombardi has asked Lieutenant Colonel James George to administer the oath of office. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Lieutenant Vincent Lombardi. <laughs> Lieutenant Lombardi will head to the Yusafa Preparatory School to begin his first assignment. Lieutenant Colonel Brett Miles will now step forward to deliver his remarks. Can we give our, uh, our newest minted second lieutenants one more round of applause? think of a better way to celebrate today. I can't think of uh, better weather, the air show that uh, that happened in the midst of our ceremony. Uh, what an awesome day. To the class of 2021, congratulations. Congratulations. You have, you have earned it. You have put in a lot of time and a lot of effort, not only to get here, but also to succeed here. Uh, I can't begin to tell you how proud I am of all of you. This year, we have thrown a significant amount. For all the family and friends in the crowd, uh, I have thrown a significant amount of responsibility at your, uh, your young men and women, and they have not let me down. Whether it's leadership in the squadron, running COVID testing for the squadron to make sure that we stay healthy, you guys have knocked it out of the park all year long. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate your leadership not only amongst yourselves uh, and amongst the wing, but especially for the underclass cadets who have looked up to you and have learned from you over the past uh, 12 months. So I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you've done in squad. This effectively, believe it or not, is more or less my last official duty as the AOC of CS-17. Two days from now, I will change out command, and I can't think of a better way and a, and a, a, 
Uh, I, we can't top this. As far as me heading out the door, uh, celebrating this with you is is a uh, is a year long, is a two year long adventure, and something that I've looked forward to since taking command. So, once again, thank you so much. To uh, JJ, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I know that they appreciate it, and I do as well. So, thank you for your wisdom. And lastly, I want to I want to say thank you to all the people standing out here that. Uh, that continuously supported the young men and women who are now second lieutenants, uh, at least ceremoniously, uh, and will be tomorrow. I can't tell you that uh, how much I appreciate it, and I know that they are here and they have been successful in what they set out to do because of the support and the effort that you poured in and invested into their lives year after year. Uh, so thank you so much. Firsties. Last official duty with me, we have an impromptu machine education class <laughs> with uh, maybe a, a handful of shot glasses down in the SAR. I want you to take advantage of the time that we have in the venue. So if you don't mind, 1630, let's be in place uh, so that I can give you one last speech and send you on your way. So thank you once again, everyone, for attending, and I appreciate it. The Commandant of the United States Air Force Academy, as well as the Group Air Officer Commanding, created a video to inspire our firsties. Unfortunately, that link will not play with the equipment we have, so we'll be sending that out. Please give it a view. It's a very touching video. <laughs> At this time, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song. This concludes the commissioning ceremony for the Cadet Squadron 17. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Thank you.